It could have been prevented. There was no need for it. She had been screened under 25 and picked up. She wouldn't have went through that, and we certainly wouldn't have went through that experience. I asked every question under the sun, am I going to die, will I lose my hair? All the questions that you think are linked with cancer. The cases of younger women getting cervical cancer are less, but at the same time, the chances are still there. My sister Sersha was such an inspirational and lovely person. Um, she was so funny, she was great fun to be around. She was so loving and caring. Um, she just embraced every challenge that she ever had in life. She was very independent, hard work, and she was just an absolute joy to be around. And I'm very privileged to have had 23 wonderful years with her. Smear tests are used to detect abnormalities in a woman's cervix before the cells become cancerous. It is estimated that 4,500 lives are saved every year from screening. In the UK, cervical screening begins when you are 25 and you are then invited every three years. Orla Robson's sister, Sorcher, was diagnosed at age 22. Today I had took a pregnancy test because I thought I was pregnant and it turned positive. And half an hour later, my sister had rang me to tell me she had cervical cancer. So my husband walked in with another test for me to do and I was crying. He thought it was because I was happy I was having a baby and I had to say no, it's because my sister had just been diagnosed with cervical cancer. So, Although she was too young for cervical screening, she had concerns and went to her doctor for advice. When she went in June, she never had any symptoms and the GP told her, you don't have cervical screening until you're 25. Um, and maybe looking back, maybe she had an inkling something wasn't right with her body, but we'll never know. Sersha um, had 13 months of treatment following her battle with cervical cancer. Um, initially, she had to decide whether to... Um, sorry. I don't know why I'm sorry. She had to decide around her fertility. So she knew that at some point, either by having a hysterectomy or by having a chemotherapy that she would have no fertility. Every week she had um, a session of chemotherapy and every day, Monday to Friday, she had a session of radiotherapy. After the cancer treatment ended, Sorcha spent Christmas at home with her family. However, the new year brought new challenges. In the March, they were worried again about lymph nodes. She underwent more tests and they were showing up as having cancer. At that point, they decided the next option was a radical hysterectomy and a full lymph node removal. When I first went home, she was in the hospital on lots and lots and lots of pain medication. At that point, the, the cancer was present on the nerves in her, in her groin, lower back area, so she couldn't walk and she was in horrendous pain. Just watching her breathing, how oh, heavy it was. And I just knew that that was probably my last moment with her. So my mum and dad came back in, and then her boyfriend, Matt, came in to spend the evening with her. They took her for a walk around the garden, so we pushed her out in the chair. And then when they were out there together, he gave her this promise ring. And she put in her Facebook post, this is the most happiest day of my life. And Matt's given me this promise ring and put a picture of the pink diamond ring on Facebook. And with the, the whole thing about this is great, and, you know, me and Matt's, get you know get going to get engaged in the future and spend the rest of our lives together and that and she died the following day it was so fast and i thought i'd have months with her ended up at a week with her so i remember going in grabbing my other sister trying to pick my mum up off the floor to get into the room we went in and Matt was just there, just holding her in the bed and she'd passed away about five minutes before. What makes it harder? It could have been prevented. There was no need for it. She had been screened under 25 and picked up. She wouldn't have went through that and we certainly wouldn't have went through that experience. During her battle, Sorcha took her story to the media and campaigned for the smear test age to be lowered. 
Her family decided to continue her campaign and along with several doctors, they created a report to present to the UK government. One of the things that stands out right from the start of the report is that um, the research used to decide on the screening age of 25 was put together in 2003. Um, so you're chatting 16 years ago. But what do the experts say? There isn't any evidence that having a smear test under the age of 25 actually does you any good at all. And there's quite a lot, well, there's a lot of evidence that it can do you harm because actually women under the age of 25 can have quite a lot of um, abnormalities in their cells which would just get better on their own. Experts suggest that many natural changes happen in a woman's cervix up to 25, so many tests will come back abnormal. But by removing these cells, this can weaken the cervix and therefore make any future pregnancies more difficult. Somebody develops cervical cancer under the age of 25 and they or their family feel that that could have been prevented by cervical screening, then that is a, I think it's really important that we do get the message across that it's not that um, this is something that we could be doing and have just chosen not to, but actually we, we, we're not doing it because it wouldn't have made any difference. Georgina Hannay was 24 when she was diagnosed with cervical cancer and similarly to Sorcha, she wasn't allowed a smear test because she was too young. However, unlike Sorcha, she did have symptoms but said the process of having a checkup wasn't quick. So I had six months of irregular bleeding, discharge, um, bleeding after sex, pain after sex. I went back to my GP for six months and it wasn't until the end of the six months where I actually went, had a scan done at St Michael's Hospital in Bristol and then they examined me and found the tumour that was growing. Having never been touched by cancer before, I didn't really fully understand it. All I assumed was that you have cancer, you die. I started to panic about whether I was going to be able to have kids and how it was going to affect my life and was I going to die and was I going to lose my hair and all the eventualities you could. I cried a lot because I didn't know what else to do and I just, yeah, I fell off the wagon for a few days. They did a cone biopsy and they took away 95% of my cervix. They just kept taking more and more away, testing the margins, and then having to take more and more to the point where I was left with 5% of my cervix. Appointment times. Georgina decided to keep everything related to her treatment as a way of coping with what happened to her. A prescription bag. These are the post-op notes they give you, all pink. I had another MRI done. <clears throat> I had, I've had about four done since the surgery, and this was another one to say it was all clear. Another follow-up, yeah, four monthly follow-ups. And then we've gone to a year. How do you feel looking through it? It's weird, because it's like, this is all five, six years ago now. The doctors told her if she wanted a baby, she needed to try as soon as possible, as her cervix was so damaged. This made her pregnancy especially difficult because she was told to stay in bed for the last few months of her pregnancy. We saw the cervix, the cervix shrink every week. It was slightly smaller and they were just like, you could miscarry at any second for the whole pregnancy. And obviously I'm in the worst position because I can't stay out and be busy. I'm in bed thinking about it 24 hours a day. It's been six years since Georgina had her treatment, but she still questions why there was a six-month gap before any treatment began and why cervical screening isn't offered any earlier. Why wasn't this picked up? Why did the GP take six months to find this? Um, and obviously the more I've talked about it over the years, the more I've questioned it. The reason they leave it at 25 is because the cases of younger women getting cervical cancer are less, but at the same time, the chances are still there. Leaving it to 23, 24, 25 gives a much longer opportunity for cancer to grow, tumours to grow, etc. And I just, I think to have avoided that, and I keep hearing of more and more cases of younger women getting cervical cancer, and I just think if it can be avoided, then, you know, what impact financially would it have to lower the age and start the smear tests earlier, yeah. really? When I approached the Central and the Welsh Government for comment on the cervical screening age, they both declined to be interviewed. However, they both sent official statements to say why they only screened 25 and over. They both agreed that the cervical screening age for 25 to 64 is the most effective. My question is though, what will happen in the future for those who aren't in that age group? As there are no current plans to increase the cervical screening age and there are no alternative ways to prevent cervical cancer in younger oh, women, you. their future is unclear. A bit of a trip down memory lane.
but a good one because I'm here and I've got my daughter. So that's why I've got.